بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يطع الله والرسول فأولئك مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصدق والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله أجمعين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن يعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت Respectable audience, distinguished listeners, honorable viewers Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today God willing we are going to talk about the humans need to revelation but prior touching this topic let me have a very brief revision of the previous lecture you know that in the previous lecture we talked about the precise definition of revelation I mean the lexical and technical definitions of revelation and we said that Nabi or the Prophet and Messenger means who receives messages from Almighty Allah and who has a very mysterious communication with the Lord, receives some messages and then conveys these messages to the human beings. This revelation or this communication can be in two forms, direct and indirect forms. And then we pointed out this important point that the technical meaning of revelation is that a man from the human being's kind should have communication with the Lord. But the nature of this communication, the nature of this relation is extremely mysterious and unknown except for those who have experienced this relation in person. For example, the divine prophets have true understanding of this revelation and Almighty Allah. But the rest of the human beings cannot have precise illustration and explanation and description of the event because this event is not a repeatable incident so that they have to repeatedly experience and they have to repeatedly analyze and describe this event so they can have an image from this communication through the signs of revelation through the transmitted knowledge through those traditions the prophet muhammad peace be upon him or the rest of the prophets have said about this experience in the previous lecture we put forth to scriptural and rational arguments for the necessity of revelation. So God willing, today we are going to talk about the human's need to revelation. Why the human beings stand in need of revelation? Do not they have this capacity to resolve their issues by their own intellect, by their own, uh, we can say, scientific discoveries by their own hands are not they able to solve their problems or there are some 
points that they stand in need of revelation. So, dear listeners and respectable audience, in the Islamic world, there are many philosophers who have developed arguments for the human's need to revelation. The people such as Avicenna, or, it is, or he is called Ibn Sina, he has said there are reasons, there are many arguments that the human's need to revelation is something constant. It is not something that they have to flee from this need. So the, the human's need to revelation is something essential. It is something unquestionable. The constituent of his arguments are some three or four points. Let me describe them one by one. Firstly, as preliminary step, he says that firstly, human beings are essentially social beings. They have to live socially. Without a social circumstance, without social ambience, they cannot live. They cannot continue living. So naturally and inherently, human beings are social beings. In social circumstance, in social ambience, for sure there will be contrasts and contradictions of interests. So when the contradictions of homes, when the contradictions of interest come, they have to be solved, they have to be resolved. A society where the human beings are living, it needs law, it needs regulations. Human beings or the society can never ever live without the rule of law, without the rule of regulations. So every society, every community, stands in dire need of law and regulations. Thirdly, these regulations and these laws or law should include, this should cover all human aspects. This law should not only cover our worldly affairs, but also it should meet our life hereafter issues. Once again, the laws and regulations not only should cover our worldly affairs, but it should also cover and encompass our life hereafter issues. So who suits best or who is the best person? Who is the best nominee or candidate that he has to legislate and he has to enact or he has to give us those lawful and legal codes. Who is the best person or who suits best? Who is the best person, an individual who has to legislate? Theoretically talking, everyone believes that he who is fully aware of the human beings or he who is aware of the human being's capacity, the human being's weak or positive and negative points. He has to enact and he has to legislate, he has to pass the laws and the regulations. So amongst the human beings who meets all these characteristics or who is able to meet all these conditions and terms, for sure, the human beings themselves do not have full knowledge of the human beings because human beings are a complicated and a very, very sophisticated being. They cannot be known by the human beings. After a decade or after, for example, 40 years of research, some of the researchers have said that we have understood the human beings. And what is the title of their book? They have written the book on human beings, but they have chosen this rubric and this theme for their book that human being an unknown being.
لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله human and unknown being. Why? Because they could not realize or they could not give their exact and precise understanding of the human. Because human being is not something very tiny or very trivial being that he has to be understood or his potentials, his capacities, his abilities, the positives and negatives should be discerned and should be distinguished or should be discerned in a very easy process. No, he is a very mysterious creature. So due to this Almighty Allah has said, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ When Almighty Allah created the human beings, then he congratulated himself for the sake of creating such a sophisticated being. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, once again, we do it reiterate what Avicenna says. He says human beings are social animals or they are social existence. They cannot live but in society. And every society in every community stands in dire need of law and regulations. So who has to pass or who has to design these sets of regulations and laws? Then we say that, who knows best the human being? Who, so who knows best the human beings? Can the human understand the humans? Then we say that, no, human beings cannot fully understand human beings. So we have to search, we have to seek, we have to go for the person, for a person, for a, an individual, for an existent who knows best the human beings so that he has to pass and he has to legislate laws and regulations for the human beings. And fourthly, all these regulations and laws must guarantee our worldly prosperity and also our life hereafter felicity. It means the laws and regulations should be comprehensive. It means it should include or it should comprise all aspects of the human's life. Our worldly prosperity, our life prosperity, our individual and our collective prosperity, all of them should be taken into account. So who is the best nominee that should legislate such laws and regulations? According to the Shi'at point of view, according to most of the Muslim philosophers, it is Almighty Allah who meets and who can provide all these characteristics, all these qualities. He is omnipotent and he is omniscient. He knows best and he is all aware of the human beings because a, the human beings are his creature and he knows best what he has created. Every manufacturer is fully aware of it is product. In the same case is true, and it holds true for Almighty Allah. Since we are the creature of Almighty Allah, since we are a kind of Almighty Allah's products, so He knows best what are the positives and negatives of human beings, or what He is equipped of, what are the components which constitute this human being. So due to this, we believe only Almighty Allah is the legislator, for he knows the human beings best. Secondly, he possesses us, and he has the authority, he has the right to intervene in human's life, because we all belong to Almighty Allah. And moreover, 
No one is aware of our inward feelings, intentions, sentiments, these and that, save Almighty Allah. So he can pass the laws and regulations that should suit our inward and outward, our interior and exterior aspects, our worldly life and our life here after life. So respectable audience and distinguished listeners, till now we could prove that only Almighty Allah is the best eligible person meeting all those characteristics for a legislator, knowing the human being, being fully aware of the human being's positives and negatives. Now we come to this conclusion, since human beings cannot be a good legislator, and then Almighty Allah is the best legislator, so they have to have a communication. Now we bring another argument, since Almighty Allah is absolutely pure, and since all the human beings cannot directly communicate with Almighty Allah, with this trans transcendental being, so the necessity of divine prophets emerge. It means all the human beings cannot make or cannot create relation with Almighty Allah, so there should be chosen people or there should be a host of chosen figures that they should communicate between Almighty Allah and the human beings. And we believe that these people or these elites are the divine prophets who receives messages from Almighty Allah from the divinity and then convey these messages to the human beings. So the human beings need to revelation is this, that they are not fully aware of human beings' nature, human beings' characteristics, human beings' different dimensions. So due to this, revelation comes through the divine prophets. So to fill this gap or to compensate these intellectual shortages. <laughs> Dear listeners and respectable audience, to simplify this very important concept, let me give you an example. Think that a friend of you or one of your colleagues, one of your wise colleague or friend has prepared many dishes or many food for his guests. This friend of you has provided each and everything, each and everything, every delicious food, or oh, to meet all your test and talent, everything is met, everything is fully prepared. But one thing that he has neglected or he has forgotten, that is this, that he has not sent you and his friends the invitation code or the address. So all these preparations that he has made for this banquet, for this party, it seems irrational and it seems useless. Because none of your friends or none of his, this wise man's friends knows where the address is or where the party is going to be held. The same case is true for Almighty Allah. Almighty Allah is wise. Almighty Allah is all wise. The prophets or the divine messengers are similar to the invitation court 
or to the address where we have to go. If Almighty Allah has created the human beings, if they are left on their own, if they are not given the guidelines of prosperity in adversity, if they are not equipped with these guidelines, for sure, Almighty Allah's creation of such a sophisticated creature would be meaningless. Because Almighty Allah had not given us the direction that we have to be guided in the straight path. If that wise man do not give the address of the pot where the pot is going to be held, or if he does not give you the address where his banquet is going to be held, none of his preparation would be useful for you. All of you would complain tomorrow meeting him in the office, saying that why you are making these illogical and irrational decisions, inviting us in your party, but not giving us the address. So Almighty also invited us towards perfection, towards evolution. Almighty Allah says we have created the human beings so that they have to evolve, they have to reach their perfection, their evolution. So how we have to reach, how we have to meet our perfection in evolution? Through the divine prophet's messages. If Almighty Allah does not give us the guidelines, it seems that Almighty Allah does not give us the address. But Almighty Allah says, I have created you and I have sent you my messengers and my apostles to be as guidelines, to be as guide for your prosperity in this life and the life hereafter. Not only exterior prophets, but also interior prophets I have provided you. And that is our intellect. And that is our inward apostle. So Almighty Allah says that I have created you, and this creation is purposeful. You have to reach your perfection. And what is the address? The address has been given by my divine messengers. And... Not only the exterior or external prophets, but also interior or internal prophets are also there with you. And that is your intellect, your conscience. Even if the prophets were not there, for sure, our internal voice, our inward voice would have guided us to the straight path. This is very much important point. <laughs> So, respectable audience and distinguished listeners, this was the response that humans need to revelation is constant and it remains for always. Secondly, there might be another problem raised in this regard, that why the prophets were selected or were elected from the Middle East, why the rest of the Ummah, why the rest of the uh, people did not have prophets. Firstly, it should be mentioned that in accordance with the Quranic logic, all the nations had their divinely sent prophets or apostles or holy figures. Or Almighty Allah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ These two verses make us understand or bring us to this conclusion. No nation is there in the history that Almighty Allah has not sent apostles or messengers 
or a person who has to give warnings for the people. وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٍ Actually, we have not made a nation deprived of a person who has to warn, a warn giver. We have not deprived the human beings or the nation from my prophets, from my messengers. Or, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا الطَّاغُوتِ I have sent my apostle, my messengers, my prophets for every nation to do these two important tasks. The first is an Allah, to worship Almighty Allah. He deserves, no one other than Allah deserves to be worshipped. Secondly, وَاجْتَنِبُ tagut. It means to campaign and to fight against the arrogance, those who stand against Almighty Allah. It means that Almighty Allah has sent His Apostle and His Messengers for all the nations, for all the communities. And thirdly, Almighty Allah says in another surah that I have sent, I have told you the story of some of my messengers. And I have not told you the story of all the prophets. It implies this concept that there are in their word the prophets that Almighty Allah had not told their story to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in his household. Meaning, giving this sense that Almighty Allah does not leave a nation or a community without any apostle, without any messenger. And it seems impossible that Almighty Allah should create the human beings, but the guidelines should not be given to them. So, dear listeners and respectable audience, may God bless us all that we have to be directed in this straight path. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم انفعنا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وجملنا بالعافية وكرمنا بالتقوى إن ولي الله الذي نزل الكتاب وهو يتولى الصالحين